What's up guys, Justin here with the Rhino Essentials. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about how to create a two-dimensional plan that you can print from your models in Rhino. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, and so we're gonna use the floor plan that we created as a part of our Getting Started with Architectural Modeling series. And what we wanna do is we wanna take this floor plan and we want to generate a drawing or a document using this image. And so the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna use the drafting functions. And specifically, we're going to create a layout. And so you can either go into drafting and click on the option for layout or new layout, or you can go to view layout and click on new layout. Now, when you do this, what this is gonna do is this is gonna allow you to set up your page. And um, we can name this whatever we want. So whenever we name our page, it's gonna show up as a tab on the bottom of the page right here. So in this case, I might call this floor plan. And um, initial detail count is just going to set the number of details that are in here. So if you pick just a top view, then it's going to include one view on the page. It's going to be the top. If you select one of these other options, it's going to have some of these other views included on the page as well. In this case, we just want the top option. We're not going to worry too much about printers for right now. You could set this to your Microsoft print to PDF or whatever you want but we're not gonna worry about that too much for right now. And we're gonna set this to a landscape. And notice how there's options in here. So for example, I might select this architectural D um, in order to set this to be an architectural D sheet. Um, that means that it's going to have a dimension of 36 inches by 24 inches. And we're gonna click on okay. All right, so what this, this has done is this has created a sheet with basically a viewport on it that's looking into your model. And notice how I can click and select in order to move that viewport around like this. So I can just select that viewport object and then I can use the gumball in order to move it around just like a piece of geometry. And so what this has done is this has been placed on a 36 inch by 24 inch sheet of paper right here. Now. Let's take a look at some of the things we can do with this. So one of the first things that you wanna be able to do is you wanna be able to adjust this. And so let's say for example, that I want to adjust the scale of this image. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the properties right here. So you wanna click on the little option with the little circle on it. And if you click on this button right here for properties, what this is gonna do is this is gonna allow us to adjust the scale. And so this is basically going to set the number of inches on our page versus the number of feet in the model. So in this case, say I wanted one inch on this page to equal eight feet in the model. If I type in a value of eight, that's going to make this smaller. If I type in a value of four, then it's going to get bigger. So you can use this in order to set the scale of your image on your page. Now, one thing to note about this is right now, if I double click, into this space right here, this basically takes me back into model space. So what that means is that means that I can scroll around like this. Um, I can hold the shift key and click and drag the middle mouse button in order to pan like this. I can also hold the alt key in order to rotate my view around like this. Not necessarily what I want to do, but I can definitely do that. Now, one thing I'm not sure how to do is once we get to that point, um, I'm not sure how to get it back to the original detail other than clicking in here and resetting that. So I'm not sure how you can change the different views in here. The documentation is actually oddly light on this mode for Rhino in general. So there's still some things I'm trying to figure out in here, but in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna set this viewport. So I'm just gonna select the viewport back to one inch equals two feet right here. Now, notice how you can adjust the size of the viewport by clicking and dragging these points like this. So I can make that viewport bigger or smaller like this in order to size it on my sheet. And then once I do that, I can select this whole thing and I can kind of move it around on my sheet like this. And so this has generally given us a document that we could print to a printer. But let's say we wanted to do some annotation. And so there's a couple things I wanna do. The first thing I wanna do is I want to add an annotation referencing the actual sheet itself. So just saying what the sheet is. So in this case, um, I'm just going to draw a shape. So I'm just gonna draw a circle 
right here. I'll draw a line. And I'm basically just drawing out the symbols that I want on here. I'm not sure of a better way to do this, but then I can add a text item. And so in this case, I'm gonna call this A1 and hit OK. And that's gonna allow me to place a text item. And so when I click on this text item, I can come over here and I can adjust it. So notice how there's an option, for example, that's gonna allow me to adjust the size of this object right here. So I can adjust the text size to whatever I want. And in this case, I don't actually want this to be A1, I want this to be one. Then I'm just gonna hold the Alt key and duplicate this. And I want this one to be a1. So I can double click on that or click over here into the properties, the text properties in order to edit that. But I'm just going to move that over like this. I'm actually going to extend this line out. And I'm just going to add a text item right here. And I'm just going to call this floor plan and click on OK. And then I'm going to adjust the size of this object. And so another thing that I want to do on this sheet is I want to add some dimensions. And so we're not going to get way in depth on dimensions in this video. We can definitely do that in the future. But in this situation, what I want to do is I want to add some linear dimensions. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to click. And this is going to add dimensions based on the points that I click on. So for example, I can pl click this point and this point and move this up. And notice how this will snap to these right here, but I can use this in order to quickly add these dimensions to my document. And so you can select these dimensions and adjust them. And so you can either click on one of these and adjust it, or you can select multiple by doing a shift click and then typing in a new value. So notice how those are all going to adjust at once like this. So you can use this in order to adjust those. The other thing that you can do, and you probably should do, is you should be keeping them on their own layer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click over here and I'm gonna add a layer and I'm gonna call it dimensions. And then I'm gonna select all of these, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna click on change object layer to put all of those on that layer. Now I can just right click and I can select everything on that layer and I can edit it. So like for example, I probably want these to be like 0.2 instead of 0.25. Then I'm going to hit the enter key right here. So you can use that in order to add dimensions to your model. Now, one other thing that is very lightly documented for some reason, I can't really figure out why, is how you can set up title blocks for your sheets. And so what I want to do is I want to create a very simple title block. So I'm going to type in rectangle and I'm just going to draw. I'm basically just drawing out a title block. Um, for my sheet. So I'm going to draw a rectangle right here and I'm just going to draw a little line right here and I'm going to add a text item. So I'm going to click on text and I'm going to have this say A1. And click on OK and I'm going to place that right here. I'm going to resize this. I'm going to adjust it so that it fits right here, that's gonna be my sheet name. So now I've got a very, very simple title block on here. And so the other thing I wanna do is I wanna set a project name. And there, there's a number of different values you would probably wanna put on a sheet, but the problem is the way that we're setting this up right now, you would have to redo this over and over again, right? So if I click on text and I'm gonna add a project name, we're just gonna call this house floor plan. I'm click on OK. I'm going to rotate it like this. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. So the problem with this is right now we would have to redraw this over and over again for every new project that we use. And I don't necessarily want to do that. What I want to do instead is I want to save this so that I can insert it for every single project. And so for now, what I want to do is I want to take all of these objects and I want to save them so that I can import them to a new model. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a shift click and select everything. And I'm going to type in the option for block. And so I'm going to type in the option for block and I'm going to set a base point of, we'll just say this corner right here. But what I want to do is I want to call this title block template. 
And basically what we're doing is we're saving this as a block of information. So I'm going to click on OK and it's going to save that. Now, I'm not sure where it saves this. It, it's got to be somewhere in the actual Rhino install file. I haven't gone and looked for it. Um, we definitely could later if we wanted to. But say I wanted to create a new sheet. Like, for example, um, I'm going to click right here. I'm going to create a new layout. And in this case, I want a top and a front view. And we're going to click on OK. So what that does is that creates two views on a sheet. And so I'm gonna go ahead and bring the size on these down, um, both of them, so they're one inch at like two feet or something like that. Or maybe I want these to be a little smaller, so maybe one inch equals four feet. But I'm going to take these and make the viewports smaller. But what I wanna do is I wanna insert the title block to this page. And so I can do that by going up to File, Insert, and so in this case, I'm gonna cr click on that title block template that I just created. I can't remember which one of these it was because they're very similar, but we'll go with this one right here. And so this is important because when you bring this in, notice how there's options for what you can insert. And so if I insert this as a block instance, so if I click on okay and I place this on my drawing, like this, because it's a block instance, I can't actually double click in here and edit it because it's just like a full on block of stuff. And so if I click on this, it's not actually gonna let me edit the text or anything like that. So what I wanna do instead is I wanna do a file insert. I'm gonna click on the option for insert as group. And then if I click on okay and I place this in here, this is gonna bring this in as a group of stuff that I can edit. So now if I place this on my page, and I double click, notice how I can get in here and I can actually edit things like my house floor plan. So in this case, I could call this like house elevations. Click on okay and I can edit that. And then I could name this like sheet A2 or something like that. But then I could come in here and I could start dimensioning this out again. And I've basically been able to create an additional sheet right here. All right, so now we wanna take this document and we wanna print it. So we're gonna go up to file print and we want to print both sheets. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to view and output scale. Notice how there's an option here to set either if you're going to, you can pick either one of these layouts right here. You can also pick some of your views if you want to do this. But in this case, I want to click on the option for print multiple layouts. That's going to print both layout one and layout two. And you can set this to save them to a separate file or to a combined file. Um, I'm going to go ahead and click on save to a separate file and we'll go ahead and add a page number and a page name to the file name. But now I'm going to click on the option for print. We'll call this house drawing. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna go through and that's gonna export both of those sheets to PDF. And so once that's done, if you go in that folder, you can see that that created a drawing one floor plan and a drawing one elevation. Those have both been named based on your tab names. But if I open this up, that PDF is going to look like this. And so there are definitely things you can do with your line weights and other things like that. I don't wanna to get too far into that in this video, but you can see how you can use this to create two dimensional drawings from your 3D models in Rhino. All right, so that's kind of an overview of how you can print plans. We can get more in depth on things like name values and title blocks, other things like that in a future video, but leave a comment below. Let me know if you have any questions, if you've done this before. I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.